Hi everybody and welcome to the channel. In this video I'm going to be talking about my first experiences of using the uh, Fujifilm X-T3 as a travel for, um, as a travel camera. Now one of the main reasons why I bought the uh, X-T3 was because I had an X-Pro1 um, uh, which I had taken on various trips and it's great because it's so small and light and I got some great uh, shots. Uh, so I bought the the X-T3 and I, I thought I'd use it for a, as a travel camera and you've got to be honest it's a much smaller beast than my previous camera that I would take on trips which is the Canon uh, 5D Mark II with a 24 to 105 mil zoom lens but that large uh, Canon 5D is really very large and I don't want to be carrying that around with me so I've got the X-T3 and on this camera um, because I was focusing principally on um, landscape photography and wide angled I went for a 10 to 24 lens I do not have the 18 to 55 kit lens I do however have a 27 mil pancake lens which is Let's see if I can focus on that, which is absolutely wonderful. Tiny, tiny lens, uh, f2 uh, if I think, if I remember correctly. So I haven't actually been on a foreign trip since uh, January or February of 2020, uh, until a couple of weeks ago when I, uh, my wife and I went to Venice for a few days. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about travel photography and what you're trying to achieve or what I'm trying to achieve when I'm uh, for traveling overseas. When I'm traveling overseas, photography isn't the biggest part of what I'm doing on that trip, invariably. Uh, it's um, subordinate to being on holiday, being with family and friends and enjoying ourselves. And uh, therefore, um, what you might focus on as a photographer in a selfish way uh, invariably gets uh, pushed to one side and that's fine but it, it changes what you're trying to achieve when you're um, uh, when you're photographing and so when I'm in a foreign location I'm trying to tap, capture something that is unique to me that is within what spurs my interest in imagination uh, of the location that I'm at. It's capturing the classic pictures that you might have seen from other people of those locations, the reasons why you went to that place in the first place. The unique culture of that location, the people, uh, the markets, the, the different things that you see, uh, and to try and tell a story of that location. And beyond that, I always bring a tripod with me and I usually go out for a sunrise shot or go out for a sunset shoot uh, at a special location so that I've got more time by myself to, to really focus in on the photography. But one other thing that I would say about the X-T3 as a suitable camera for, um, as a suitable camera for travel photography, it's absolutely fantastic. Sometimes, uh, I went with the 10 to 14 uh, and obviously was shooting wide. Now the problem with that is that I had to do a bunch of uh, correction for vertical distortion in some of my pictures um, and probably I was shooting a little too wide. I, th I think the 24 to 100 that I have on the Canon is a better lens for travel photography. It gives you a more um, uh, it gives you some longer zooms and it gives you some uh, good wide shots without leading to too much distortion. The 27mm that I had was also a great um, lens. It's so light, I put it on, forgot about it, I uh, had everything set up in auto and could capture everything. So in conclusion, is the X-T3 a great camera for travel? Absolutely. I really loved it. I loved how light it was, how easy it was to use, uh, and it's been really great. What I would say is, although the 10 to 14 is a great lens for landscape photography, it's not so great uh, as a travel companion. Uh, you probably want something like the kit lens, the 18 to 55, or a, uh, the 27 mil in combination with a, uh, a zoom, uh, a longer telephoto. Um, 
here are the pictures that I took. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and if you have, uh, please consider subscribing. It makes an incredible difference if you put the thumbs up, give us a like. Uh, I appreciate your time today. Uh, thanks for stopping by and uh, see you next time. When I travel to a new location, I try to establish a sense of place and find images that will project the feelings I had in that place. For Venice, this is a city of water, a city of fine churches, palazzos, piazzas, and of course, getting around over bridges or by canals and waterways. I then try to ensure that I have made an effort to capture the classic images of that location. St. Mark's, the Doge's Palace, the Bridge of Sighs, here captured pre-dawn, the Grand Canal taken from the Academia and Rialto bridges, Rialto Market, and of course no trip to Venice is complete without some pictures of gondolas. I took these as the sun broke from behind Arsenali and cast side light on San Giorgio. A day out makes a great way to tell a story. Here the focus is more on record shots than photographic greatness, but these pictures will long remind you of a memory that you created on that day. Here a trip on the Vaporettas out to the islands of Torcello, Burano and Murano. I took a standard image of the Basilica of Torcello, but also tried to capture a more striking image from a different angle, and here the ultra-wide lens did pay off. Burano, with its colourful painted houses, are not easy to capture well, so I focused instead on the block colours of windows and contrast window boxes peeking out from behind blinds. Murano, famed for its glass blowing, gave an opportunity to photograph glassworks that I could never afford. A focus on details helped to give a real sense of place and Rialto Market was a feast of autumnal produce and locally caught fish, shrimp and other seafood. In a cafe I drank excellent coffee and wrote postcards home. Walking the streets of the city, I enjoyed the colourful bright window displays juxtaposed against sometimes wanton and at other times politically motivated graffiti. Coronavirus has heavily impacted the tourist trade in Venice, so I took the opportunity re to record some of the impacts on life there. People queuing for entry to Basilica San Marco were required to socially distance. The bridge overlooking the Bridge of Sighs had no tourists jockeying for position to take the best shot. Market traders were making good business selling Venetian face masks as a local law required face masks to be worn at all times. When I go somewhere new, I look to turn away from the tourist haunts and try and find locations that tell the story of the place behind the curtain. Back streets and small squares away from tourist locations felt special and offered some great photogenic scenes. I'm not a great street photographer, but I enjoyed setting up compositions and waited for people to walk into them. The Venice Film Festival cinema served as a great backdrop for these two cyclists rushing by. I used strong shadows to frame a wedding couple captured a cafe worker soaking up the sun on her cigarette break and captured a man in a pool of light on a bridge and I did some candid street shots from a cafe showing the different standards of face mask wearing. I set up my camera for some candid night shots of gondoliers waiting for trade at Ponte Rialto shooting from the hip using the flip screen of the X-T3 to compose these pictures unobserved. Finally, I took some time out to go with my tripod to capture the sunset at San Giorgio, 
But here I really needed a telephoto lens to adequately capture San Salute sil silhouetted against the setting sun. But my 10 to 14 worked well for some night shots at St. Mark's. and gondolas at dawn. I loved Venice and I hope my pointers for travel photography can help you next time there may be an opportunity to make an overseas trip. <laughs>